Today, I kid you not, I was going to talk about the Trump's Federal Reserve and how bond yields are inverting. But like, I feel like at this point if you choose to talk about bond yields over the release of the Mueller report, well, that's just bad reporting. 81% of Americans think that the Mueller report should be released in full, although that's based on a Washington Post poll, so maybe more like 81% of coastal elites. But still, that's more Americans than I would have ever guessed would have wanted to read a government document. Knowing how good Trump is at sniffing out a business opportunity, I'm surprised he hasn't considered publishing this report as a sequel to The Art of the Deal yet. Talk about straight to the bestsellers list. Now, I suspect, and I'm just trying to tamper down everyone's expectations here, but reading the Mueller report's probably going to be kind of like reading Harry Potter after you just saw the movie. You got the gist of it from the last year and a half of coverage. What happened? how it happened, and who the main characters are. But there might be some exciting details that, man, why didn't they include that in the movie? Also just reading the back jacket of the book, also known as Attorney General Barr's summary, Mueller found that neither Trump nor anyone from his campaign conspired or coordinated with Russia during the election. Whew, so wow, a lot of people wasted a lot of time covering that story. There's still obstruction on the table, but we'll get to that in a bit. Today I'm not focusing on what might be in the report, because writing a paper about a questionably reliable summary of something I haven't read, well, I'm not in college anymore. I'll leave that to the professional newscasters. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on the coming legal battle that is publishing this book called The Mueller Report. With the special counsel's report now turned in, congressional leaders from both parties in rare agreement, Democrats and Republicans now calling for Attorney General Bill Barr to make good on his word, to release as many details as possible. There are a few steps between Mueller and the public designed to filter out classified or need to know information. So step one of the publishing process, Mueller hands this report over to Attorney General William Barr. Now this isn't a mind-blowing or scandalous thing. Barr is the head of the Justice Department, so this is basically just handing over the report to your boss before it goes out. This is where we're at right now. By law, the only thing that the Attorney General is required to release is a description and explanation of instances in which the Attorney General concluded that a proposed action by the Special Counsel was so inappropriate or unwarranted under established departmental practices that it should not be pursued. Don't worry, we're definitely not leaving empty handed here. Bare minimum, we end up with a list of every time this Special Counsel overstepped. Which I think Trump would be more than fine to publish that report. Now building on that, the Attorney General may determine that public release of these records would be in the public interest. So what's going to get passed down to the next level of the pipeline is A, a list of all the times Mueller overstepped, and B, all of the information that the Attorney General deems relevant for public interest. This information gets pushed down the pipeline to there are multiple sources telling us that White House lawyers expect to have an opportunity to review whatever version of Robert Mueller's report Attorney General Bill Barr submits to Congress before it reaches lawmakers and before it goes public. So our friend, the Attorney General Barr, picks the stuff he wants to submit to Congress and then sends it all over to Congress. But as you saw from the clip, White House lawyers are looking to intercept the edited report before it gets to Congress. Now some of you might be ready to light your torches and march on Washington, but this isn't out of the question. I mean, it would violate norms that say the Justice Department stay independent of the White House, but violating a norm or two isn't something that keeps Trump awake at night. That said, things are getting pretty Nixon-y up in here. Now, I did an entire episode about this, so if the next section really speaks to you, well, I got you covered. Mr. Barr plans to consult with the White House about any confidential internal information that is potentially subject to executive privilege. You see, while Attorney General Barr is Mueller's boss, Donald Trump is William Barr's boss. So Trump is saying, you know what, let me just give this report a once over before we send it out. Executive privilege might soon top the list of privilege types hated by liberals. 
Basically, executive privilege is the power to keep secret information whose disclosure could inhibit the executive branch's ability to carry out its constitutional functions. And I hear what you're saying. Well, that could be anything. If diplomats find out the president is a moron, well, that could definitely hurt his ability to carry out his constitutional functions. And this is where the United States v Nixon really comes in. Because it put limits on what a president could claim executive privilege on. Which is why America can now hear Nixon testing out what I can only assume is new comedy material. You know, one of the reasons that fashions have made women look so terrible is because the goddamn designers hate women. Now that's true. You watch. Now they're finally getting around now. You know, some of the, some of those, you know, they have the flat chested thing, those horrible looking styles they have around. That was really the designers taking it out on the web. I'm sure that. Hot pants. Jesus Christ, I agree with that. <laughs> That material and more brought to you by limits on what a president can claim executive privilege on. And oof, I would have tried to claim executive privilege on that too because man, that bit was not ready for the public. Maybe hit up a few more closed mic nights first. What was at issue in this case was whether Nixon could claim executive privilege over an incriminating portion of that tape where he laid out, in detail, his campaign of obstructing justice in the special counsel investigation against him. The Supreme Court ruled that any information where military or diplomatic secrets are not at stake, that can have its executive privilege challenged in the courts. And people are really predicting that this part of the pipeline from Mueller to us is where the septic system joins up and things really start getting dirty. This is where you can probably expect to find the most legal fights. Especially because there's still the possibility of the Mueller report laying out a case for Congress to bring obstruction charges against the president. But again, haven't read it so not gonna go there. So Barr took out the things he thinks are classified, Trump's claiming executive privilege over parts of it, what next? The way this is supposed to work is the report's supposed to go to the Justice Department and then to Congress. The House last week voted unanimously to have that report be available in its entirety. Okay, so first, yes, the House voted that they wanted to see the Mueller report in its entirety. But it's a non-binding resolution, so that was time well spent. Wait, you're telling me Congress wants as much information as possible? Wow, but that's so much reading. You sure they don't want me to black out 90% of this report? I mention the non-binding nature of this because it means nothing beyond the fact that all of the congressmen agree that they would enjoy this. It's basically the most aggressive form of passive aggressiveness you can do. They're leaving a giant post-it note on Trump's fridge saying, give us the Mueller reports. Okay, so the White House and the Attorney General send this report to Congress with their removals. We're good to go now, right? Well, no, because Congress also gets their own redaction power. Part of their argument for getting the entire report is, well, we can be the ones to censor it. Now, it wouldn't take a genius to figure out that from Trump's perspective, well, there's some stuff in this report that might not be damning, but makes me look not great. I think I'd like to be the one to wield the black sharpie here. I get that there may be, if there was classified information in this, then Congress can handle that. But they let the person and the entity challenge sort out what they want revealed, uh, given the, their track record right now makes absolutely no sense. It is the fox guarding the hen house. So once Barr takes out what he deems to not be in the interest of the public, and Trump's team takes out what they deem to be executively privileged information, Congress will be in charge of redacting any information that might have slipped through the cracks. My guess is that our federal budget for this year might have to include a new line item. A billion dollars for black ink? Well, okay. People are anticipating that if Congress doesn't get satisfactory disclosure from the executive branch, they're probably going to push back on the executive privilege using subpoenas. And you know that United States v Nixon precedent I was talking about earlier. So when you're watching the news and just tracking this Mueller report in the coming weeks as it travels through this pipeline, keep these three steps in mind. I look forward to getting my hands on that report eventually, 
Let's just hope it's less censored than Eminem on Radio Disney. Until then, thank you, and mercifully, this might be close to all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.